Okay, Senya, what was your concern about 11? Um, 11 is not uh, on the dice. 11 is not on the dice. Um, that's, I see what you're saying, but I'm not actually looking at the sums this time. I'm just thinking about rolling uh, one die to be a five or the other to be a three. So in this case, 11 represents a five and a six. One of those dice is a five. See, I, I said here when we started, don't add them up. It's not a sum. This time all we're going to do is we're going to think about it as um, one die has to be a five, the other die has to be a three. So in fact, 11, um, if I roll two dice, one of those has to be a five, the other is a six. And maybe we need to talk about this after, but uh, you're looking at the sum. I'm saying forget the fact that we're adding them together, just realize that one of the dice has to be a five, the other one is a three. Oh, I get it. Got it? There we go. Good morning. Welcome. Okay, five and three. What if we rolled a five and a three? How many ways can we do that? Four. Four ways to do a five and three. How? Which four are those? There's only two. Yeah, there's only two ways to do that. If you roll five and three, it has to add up to eight. So it's actually these ones here that I'd be looking at. So that would be two out of 36. What if we wanted to roll a sum of 10 or higher? Six out of 36. Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So six out of 36. Okay. What if we wanted to roll over seven? Let's take a look at the game that we played with the dice. It's equal. Well, it will be equal if it's over seven or under seven, but what's the probability? What's the difference if I go over seven and under seven? What's the probability? Fifteen over thirty. One thirty-six. Seven over. One two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen. And there are thirty-six possible sums. Well, I thought we were talking about the game. So. Yes, we are. So the way I could roll over or under seven is fifteen out of thirty-six. But you said seven. You still count the seven side, yeah. Well, seven won't win. So you don't count them in your winnings. This is where your winnings are on top. Oh, okay. You don't count seven in those top numbers because you lose. Okay? But there are 36 possible sums, 15 of which will win if you bet over or under. So this game was not fair. I was slated to win this one. The probability that you win is about 40-something percent, 41 or 42 percent. Okay? So if you did win, this would be an example where you'd say you're lucky to win because the probability is lower than you'd expect. At 50-50, you know, that's just kind of average. But when it's 40%, you beat the odds, we consider you lucky for winning. Okay, so Andrew, you were lucky to win. Okay, um, a family of three children, what's the probability that exactly two are girls? Now, I always laugh at this example because um, it makes me think of those families who have like four boys, and they just gave up. They were like, hey... We really wanted a daughter, but that's it. We're done. I happen to know of one person who had four boys and said, okay, okay, fine. We'll try one more. One more child. It's going to be a girl. Fingers crossed. Please, please, please be a girl. They had twins, and they were boys. <laughs> so they had six boys. Yeah. So, you know, someday when you're thinking about a family, you might be wondering, well, geez, you know, I, I don't want to have more than three children, but I really like to have boys and girls. What's the probability of doing something like that? Well, exactly two girls. Let's figure it out. If we wanted exactly two girls out of our three children, what would the probability be? Would you count the age, though, like, like specific ages? Um, eight, well, we're only concerned about gender here, not really ages. I mean, like uh, the order that they... Um, when we model a probability, <laughs> when we model the probability tree for this, uh, we're going to do it age by age. So, for example, um, this would be the first child, child number one. Then we have another child, child number two. Yeah, this, this is not a family tree. This is a probability tree. Okay. So uh, there are possibilities are boy girl. Then the next child could be a boy or a girl. 
It's like when we did the cafeteria example. It's not like the sandwich gave birth to coffee, right? We, we had a tree diagram that listed what? possible events. What? Yeah, I know. Okay, so I'm not saying that the, the child has had children. We're saying that these are the events that could happen in our experiment. So if we look at all possible outcomes, okay, how many ways are there to have three children? There are eight ways to have three children. So the sample space has eight outcomes. How many of those outcomes give you exactly two girls? Well, I'll show you one branch. This branch right here, this is a boy, girl, girl. There are two girls in that family. So how many branches do that? Really? Well, I see three. I don't see four. There's girl, boy, girl. Girl, girl, boy. So exactly two girls. There are three ways to do that. Are you counting later life choices? No, all we're looking at is the probability tree. Nothing else. Okay? So the idea of building a probability tree is going to be something we do for the whole unit. And you want to model it after each event that occurs. Okay? So... If we take a look, question? I have a question. When going from the top, say, we can go like the diamond shape, girl, boy, girl, or boy, girl, girl. Would that be the same thing? So you're talking girl, boy, girl? No, the other way. Girl, boy, boy. That's a girl. <laughs> no, that's a boy right there. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Each branch is boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Okay. Okay? So... When we use a probability tree, it has to model all possible outcomes, and we want it to model event after event which occurs. So for example, in this game, when the pointer is spun twice, find the probability that you win $10. So here's the way I would model this. I'm going to spin this, this thing twice, this uh, wheel, and hopefully win something. So here's what I'm going to roughly have. The first spin is the first event that could happen. So this is my first spin. And then what could happen is I could either have 0, 5, 10, or $20. Okay. Now when I spin it the second time, I have the same four possible outcomes. Okay. So what are those outcomes? Well, again, there's 0, 5, 10, 20. 0, 5, 10, 20, 0, 5, 10, 20, 0, 5, 10, and 20. So, if we wanted to win a total of $10, okay, first of all, how many ways can we play this game? 16 ways. There are 16 branches, so there are 16 ways to play this game. How many of them do I win $10? I'm sure, Senya. Three. No, wait. It has to be a total of 10. Three. Three ways. It is the branch here where I win $10, 5 and 5, or 10 and 0. So there are 3 out of 16 ways to do that. Okay. Um, what if I wanted to get the same number on each spin? Yeah, so this time it would be 0 and 0. It would be 5 and 5, 10 and 10, 20 and 20. So there are 4 out of 16 or one quarter. Okay. So I'm going to get you to try making your own probability tree for this experiment. One key difference you have to think about is there's no replacement in this experiment. That means once you take one of the cards out, you can't put it back in. It now has only three remaining when you pick this, the, uh, the next uh, card out. So if you've done your probability tree properly, you should have 12 branches. Okay, see if you can produce your own. Okay, so um, in this experiment, this time I have four choices for the first possible answer. 0, 5, 10, and 20. Then once I've taken 0 out, I only can pull out 5, 10, or 20. So similarly, when I pull out the next card for these, I have to exclude the 5. So it would be 0, 10, 20. Here would be 0, 5. 20, and here would be 0, 5, and 10. So the branches which I win a total of $10 are here, 
um, let's see here, here, and I can't do it any other way, so there would be uh, two possible ways to win out of a total of 12. 